What's up everybody? How are you doing? This is Bayo Adio. I am a Nigerian American that currently vlogs about Nigeria. If you guys have been following me, you know that I like to think of how people are overcoming the problems that exist in Nigeria. I try to focus on how people are overcoming it rather than the actual problem itself. And this is what may, has made my trip uh, great because I made an inventory of everything that I don't like and I figured out how to overcome it. And then that's why I love being here. So one of the major things that people are hesitant about when they come to Nigeria <coughs> or when they're, when they're looking for like building a home or a place to stay, it's like a one 24 hour power supply. It's like one of the main things that people look for in an estate and an apartment. So I wanted to show you guys how people are overcoming this in Lagos. So I came here to come and get some lessons from my dad and he is going to walk me through this process. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through this process, process with you guys and then I would, if I get stuck on the process, he'll be able to correct me. So to give you guys a quick overview, um, people, there, a lot of people are actually existing outside of the government supplied grid, like off of the NEPA grid. People are using alternative power like wind energy, uh, solar energy, and then generator is what has been popular for the longest time. But now people are tapping into solar and wind as well. Before we get started, I want my dad to share his background in, I think he studied something to be able to be familiar with this process. So, Dad, how did you learn about all of this stuff? <laughs> okay, before I moved to Nigeria, I always knew there's going to be power problem. <laughs> so I went to school to learn about solar energy. And uh, this is what I came up with. All you need is to install solar, solar panels on your roof. And the technology is greater now. You can have it in a 150 watts. You can even have it in 200 watts. They have even made panels now with 350 watts. So panels gives you direct current. And uh, you can have as many panels as you want because the good news is Nigeria is full of sun light. And pan uh, the solar panel depends on sunlight. So early in the morning, uh, like 6 o'clock in the morning, I always tell my wife, oh, we have light. <laughs> and at night, I say, oh, they've taken the light. Well, here's the good news. Once you have your solar panel, mm -hmm. you can now uh, redirect it to your charge controller. Yes, so let me go through that step, step one by one step. So if you have the solar panel on the top of the roof, yes, and where does it connect to? It comes to the charge control. Okay, um, it comes to this one. Yes. Okay, so the solar panel comes to the charge controller. And what is the purpose of this charge controller? Uh, in order to make your battery last long, you need to be able to regulate how much current goes into it when charging. Oh, okay. Because if you overcharge it, the battery will not last long. Ah, okay. And if you undercharge it too, it will not give you enough you know, the desired power. Okay, so that makes sense to me. So the solar does not connect directly to the battery of the house. So it goes from the solar to the charge controller that regulates how, um, if the battery is fully charged, it stops. Then it stops. It stops the current flow from the battery not being overcharged. Okay. Is there any other usage for this controller, sir? There are two ways. Okay. One uh, one connection goes to your battery. Okay. The other one can be connected directly to your appliances if you have a DC power control appliance. Appliance. Okay. So this one regulates the battery. It also serves another purpose where if you have a direct current DC appliance, um, which I learned that most of the appliances are AC, but if you have a DC appliance, you can actually connect it directly this directly to it, like a microwave that you have this DC. And what most people do, they just, mm -hmm. they run a parallel wires. So mm -hmm. it's part of the house. Oh. So you can have two sockets, one for AC, one for DC. Oh, okay, so, so that's how they handle that. that and then I see some USB uh, cab uh, cables here. Those are direct, directly connected to the panels. Oh, okay, so I can charge you my can charge phone. Your phone. 
directly yes, into, here. into here. Wow, this is and cool. Then this this particular body has a purpose. Okay, yeah, I see one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, guys. So I want to give you guys a quick uh, overview of the display of what's shown in the charge controller, so you guys know. So this input is the voltage that is coming from the source, and then this. Is going to the battery so this lets you know how much voltage is going to the battery what's fascinating that I just learned is that this can also expand to the needs of your battery so I think that's also cool and if you're plugging your this directly to like a appliance this will also show you the output that's going but I think this is automated you don't have to do anything with it but I just think it's cool to see the voltage needs of your battery and the input that is coming in so I just want to give you guys a quick overview all right, back to the program. We're in the charge controller. So this charge controller goes to the battery. Then it supplies, you know, the, your battery is your storage unit. Okay. So one thing that I've learned through this process is I thought the solar just powers the house. But it's I'm kind. learning that ideally you want to take the power and store it in the battery. And then the battery powers the house. The battery then, uh, it depends on what you operate. You okay. have an AC. Uh, appliances, mm -hmm. then you need an inverter. Okay, the inverter will convert, will convert, you know, the power, the electricity coming from the battery goes to the inverter. Okay, then the inverter converts from DC to AC. To AC, okay. Now you can power it. Ah, that makes sense. And by the way, guys, this is a short term solution. Ideally, I think this is a car battery, but this is just short term. Um, they're gonna buy like actual batteries that you should buy that's designed for this purpose. Like this battery here. And um, how, and then when you go from the battery, you have to go to the next step, which is the inverter. Yes. So he's telling me that the inverter converts it from DC, DC current to, to AC. And then the wiring of the whole house is connected to the inverter. To the inverter. Okay, and the battery stores it and then the inverter powers the whole house. Okay, now, son, I see this. What is this? Uh, that's to, that's your changeover between uh, your the, ener the energy coming from the solar system and your regular electricity. Okay. If I have, uh, if it, like now we don't have electricity, okay, I switch that to the uh, inverter unit. Okay. Once I have electricity, I switch them to electricity. Okay, so like now, for example, if there's no light, if you switch this, it would use solar energy. Yes. I mean the battery. Yes. It okay. Will, it will go to because I'm using two different systems. Okay. Like the regular electricity from the government. Yes. And my own power unit. Okay. So this switches between the government grid and the battery. The battery. Yes. Okay. So now, sir. So that's from the solar part. Yes. So how does the generator work? Uh, there's another ch uh, changeover between the generator and the government power as well. Oh, so there's a changeover between government, generator, and solar. Yes. It's, so there's three things here. Yeah, there's one here, there's one outside for the, uh, for the, oh, for the generator. Oh, for the generator. Okay. So now you can switch between three power sources. Yes. You can see I want to use the gen, the uh, solar, the solar or the government. The <laughs> so some of the estates, guys, that you guys see that have like 247 electric what they do is they primarily some of them run on the nepa grid but as soon as the nepa takes the light they switch it over to like their battery or their inverter or their generator to continue going and somebody just monitors that back and forth but i think i heard that they have a system sir that can automatically change between both is that yeah, true? there's an automatic switch switch one and like this one no, so you, that, this, is, this is manual Okay. That you can buy an electronic switchboard. Wow, that's what cool. That will automatically you know, change. change you know. Wow. So like if you bought the automatic one, you can just have it hands-free where they take the light, yeah. it automatically switches to the other one and it automatically yeah. switches to the other one. Definitely. Wow, okay, this and is very cool. one, if there is uh, government power, instead of relying on the solar, you, know, you can also use government power to charge your battery. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so he just told me that you can even get the power from the grid and when it's coming on to charge your battery. Yes. So, sir, so this guy, so this, this way is the reverse now. The electric power comes into the inverter. The inverter now mm -hmm. changes to DC to charge the battery. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. 
<laughs> so yeah, so the inverter works both ways. It, works both it can ways. take the electric from the AC yeah. to the DC to yeah. charge the battery. battery. And from, from the battery, from the uh, DC to AC. <laughs> so the inverter is very, very crucial and yeah, part of this process. Awesome. So you can actually bypass the battery if you wanted to and go directly from the solar to the inverter to your house, right? Well, if you're using the... Uh, well, say that again, if you're using the inverter? Yeah, if you're using the inverter. Can the inverter, can you just do a direct power from solar to inverter to the house? Yes, daylight. You can do daylight. Okay, during daylight because it's continuously, because it's continuously supplying, supplying the solar. So if you don't have night, a night, you're going to need this. Ah, the sun is it's there. not there. So you can technically have a solar powered house during the day oh, yeah. and then charge your battery and then at night switch the battery to power you, you overnight. Wow, that's cool. So now, sir, so tell me the capacity of the battery. How, so let's just say, so for example, this is a three bedroom complex that we're looking at, this model. To be able to power the AC, the fridge, the stove, the lights, how many batteries, how much can a battery sustain that for? Seven hours, eight hours? Okay, this is where it comes in very handy. You need to do uh, what we call the, uh, uh, it's an assessment of your need. Okay. Because you have to tabulate your consumption, okay. what you have in the house. Okay. And that is what you use to determine the size of the power you need. Mm. You can't just buy any battery. Okay. You have to determine. Say you're going to use air conditioning. Is it a one phase air conditioning? Is it a one horsepower, two horsepower? You record it. How many fans do you have in the house? How many fridge? How many TVs? We have a TV in every bedroom. So you use that calculation to determine the number of batteries you need. Okay. So then when you do all those calculations, sir, is it wattage that you're calculating to know how many watts of battery that you need? Is it voltage? How, what are you looking at? Uh, you, you're looking at the wattage is power. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. So but the most two important things is the voltage. Voltage. And uh, there are two uh, voltage systems. One is a 24 volt system, and the other one is a, the other one is a 12 volt system. Wow. I'm using a 12 volt system. So what's the difference between a 12 volt and a 12 volt? Power. Okay, so like 24 your volts trailer, power. The trailer that drive, you know, the big trailer on the street. Okay. They use a 24 volt battery. Okay. So if somebody wants to be on cars a, use a 12 volt. Oh, so if somebody wants to be on the safe side, they can just get a 24 volt. 24 volt usually carries your air conditioning, all the heavy equipment. Everything. So, and then you can have more than one battery. You can have more than one battery. There's a caveat too. Even when you have many batteries, there are two ways you can connect your batteries. One is a series connection, and the other one is a private connection. Mm. If you're looking for more uh, amperage, yes, and then uh, you have to connect it in the series okay. but you're looking for more voltage i mean if you, if you want the voltage to stay the same you have a parallel connection so the electrician will be able to determine, to be able to determine that. that wow this is very cool thank you so much for sharing sir so um this is how you can live off the grid in nigeria i actually talked to a real estate developer who's kind of building apartments for the diaspora you guys can watch my video i think i'll put it on top of here and he knows the needs that the diaspora is wanting. How he designed his real estate is to be completely independent of the government. So if you guys want to live off grid, uh, this is a system that you can set up. Obviously, I'm not shooting this video for you to set it up on your own. You need to hire an electrician to set it up for you, but at least you kind of know the process and you know that it's possible to live in Nigeria with 247 power supply. And you can do a share thing or you can live completely off the grid. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your knowledge with no us. So, All right. Everybody come to Nigeria. Come on home. <laughs> no light problem. No light problem. You can overcome it. I Problems know. is there to be overcome. Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, guys. And lastly, remember to rise and let your light shine. Peace.